Well, I wish to thank Sharka for giving me this uh, Sharka Regional Professor J Award uh, for 2013-2014. There are actually three awards uh, this year in the whole Southeast Asia. The, the topic for the professional, uh, professorial lecture is actually motivated by a number of research projects that I have done with Sharia, with the Department of Agriculture, with Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations here in the Philippines, in which uh, I am the team leader. Uh, the topic is basically uh, climate change adaptation and agri-insurance uh, is just one of the measures to manage climate risk. And therefore, uh, in this presentation, I wish to acknowledge my co-workers, my co-researchers in these projects. And I also wish to thank all of you for coming uh, uh, to allow me to share these experiences and results through this particular lecture. There has been a slight change in uh, the title of my presentation because I found it too long. So I decided to uh, change it, but the content is still the same. Okay. So, uh, the, the title is Implementation Issues in Weather Index Based Insurance in Agricultural Crop Production in the Philippines. The, the track of my presentation will be as follows. First, I will start with the agricultural production system and its relation with climate. Then, I will talk about climate risks and crop losses as well as damages, how we quantify them or attempts have been done to quantify them at the national and also for specific locations. And then I'll discuss strategies and measures in managing climate risk in crop production. And then specifically focus on agri insurance as a climate risk management strategy and highlight then the issues and challenges in the implementation of the so-called weather index based insurance. And then I will also uh, discuss some of the imperatives for the efficient implementation of this program. Okay. Now, we all know that weather and climate are actually important factors for in crop production. Uh, crop growth and yield are actually defined by weather and climate variables such as temperature, solar radiation, relative humidity, what else, wind speed, and so many things. And we are also aware that um, there are significant crop losses uh, that have been incurred due to extreme climate variability, such as El Nino, La Nina, super typhoons, storm surges, and so on. And therefore, crop production is indeed vulnerable to climate change. And in particular, with climate change, then associated with temperature increase, erratic rainfall patterns, more intense extreme events and sea level rise are actually reducing our crop productivity. And therefore, climate change threatens food security. The availability of food, the accessibility of food, including also the sustainability of food production system. In particular, climate change actually results to spike length sterility. And this is due to the high temperature and using spike sterility, particularly during the flowering stage of the crop. And this is done even before the actual experiment was done. We have actually done this when I was at Erie uh, on biosimulation. That we have identified that for uh, there is a reduction of about 16% uh, in sterility with a 1% or 1 degree Celsius increase in uh, temperature threshold. And this is basically at the neighborhood of 34 to 35 degrees Celsius. There are actually a number of associated climate risks. Climate risks due to uh, temperature increase, erratic rainfall, typhoons, and so on. And this brings about crop losses and damages. Now, in recent years, uh, a number of, there are about 1 million hectares affected. And uh, well, with the same super typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda, um, well, the damage has increased, uh, damaging most part of uh, Eastern Visayas. And this actually resulted to more than millions or billions of uh, losses or damages 
particularly to rice and corn and high value crops. Uh, nationwide, the average losses as a percent of output or area measure ranges from uh, range from uh, 3% to 6%, uh, depending on uh, say high value crops, also corn, and also rice. But basically, this is a very significant uh, reduction as far as available food for everybody's consumption. Now, extreme climate variability has actually affected crop production. And in particular, you will note here that in the uh, driest uh, year, 97-98, we have seen a big drop in area planted, in crop productivity, and therefore in crop production. And that's shown in 1997-98. And similarly, in 1982-1983, the same pattern, you have seen the reduction in rice production. You can also see the same pattern for other crops uh, at the national level. And um, actually, uh, natural calamities brought about by this climate risk has actually contributed to about more than 12 billion pesos losses and damages. And uh, well, this is mainly due to typhoons and other related uh, climate risks such as flooding, uh, plus floods, and also droughts. Sometime 2005, we have done a study here in Sharka trying to quantify the reduction, the reduction coefficient for yield. And we have done this for selected crops and also for specific locations in the country. And you'll see here that based on our survey, there is a, a range of a significant reductions as far as productivity in these different crops. And you will know also that the reduction is actually location specific and also commodity is specific. Countrywide, we, have, we can probably uh, summarize the estimates of crop losses due to typhoons, floods, droughts, and pests. And you see a range of uh, reductions uh, in present uh, on the different crops due to typhoons, drought, pests, and diseases. These are important information in quantifying how much is the loss or losses or damages because every time uh, there is a natural calamity, the government will have to estimate and come up with uh, figures to quantify these crop losses and damages. In a project that we did with the DA and also FAO, we uh, come up with estimates of crop production losses. And uh, what we have done is we quantify the losses based on the different development states of the crop. And you see here the different estimated yield loss in percent, and uh, that is done for most of the crops that you can find here. For example, palai, corn, coconut, avocado, and other crops, including also fish series and livestock. But I will show only for palai, for example, uh, for different stages, you see the uh, the different uh, estimated uh, losses for different uh, development stages and also the number of days the crop is flooded. But of course you know that there is now a variety that even 17 days flooded or submerged in uh, flood waters, uh, there is no significant reduction in here and I'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, we have done also the same estimates or estimation for corn yield loss due to strong winds and we categorize winds according to uh, wind velocity for a certain duration, less than 12 hours and 12 hours. And you see here the different estimates. So these values are actually being used by the Department of Agriculture and immediately right after uh, the occurrence of natural calamities, they sent out their team and these figures are actually being used to estimate the damage. We have also come up with estimates for uh, uh, vegetables, particularly in Bugias, in Benguet, and also in Ato. Now, you will note here, for example, that frost is an important uh, consideration, particularly in this area, where temperature is 2 to, three, two, 2 to 3 degrees Celsius, lower than the temperature in Baguio. So, they experience actually frost at about 5 degrees Celsius. That can also be, uh, we have come up also with estimates for Bugias, and ato or cabbage, which is actually very sensitive to temperature, temperature uh, uh, 
uh, case. And you know here, uh, the experience that if cabbage is exposed to one day of frost, there's no significant damage, but then two consecutive or three consecutive frost days, then you'll have total damage for the crop. So it just be fed to the dogs or to the to the pigs. Okay. Now uh, a particular interest to us would be how do we adapt or how what would be the strategies and measures in managing climate trees in crop production? There are actually a number of strategies and procedures. Uh, one group of procedures we can classify as good or best agricultural practices, which our farmers have probably been uh, conducting already in their respective areas. And some uh, measures could be grouped according to technological innovations, making use of advances in science and technology, and there are also institutional measures such as agri insurance. Okay. Uh, well, good agricultural practices we know would be location and commodity specific innovations. There are existing uh, practices which have been time tested by our partners, but then of course this can just be copied by other farmers in one particular location, provided some innovations are introduced. And of course, we have so-called innovative knowledge-based practices and technologies, uh, making use of the advances in science and technology, including varietal improvement through breeding, like for example, breeding of uh, stress-tolerant varieties of rice and also other crops. This includes, for example, changing production system, such as introducing mixed cropping, crop diversification. We also have uh, rainwater harvesting, and this is actually a site in Lamont Ipagao, going to the rice terraces, wherein the water is also being used uh, for crop production as well as for fish production. In some areas, like in Tuba, we have over, uh, overhead irrigation systems, such as uh, shown by that uh, oops, okay, that particular uh, sprinkler there. And in Tiana, we have the so called uh, combinations of rice terraces. Uh, this is used for rice terraces, this is used for vegetables, and this is agroforestry. That's actually one good practice in that particular area. We have also rice terraces with crop poles in uh, in Kiangan, in Kiangan uh, Ibuga. Okay. Improved water management, such as improving water use efficiency and also synchronizing the growing season or planting calendar with water availability based on availability of rainfall, of water from rainfall. Uh, there are also uh, improved crop varieties such as those resistant to temperature increase uh, and also drought tolerant tolerant to uh, drought and also resistant to salinity such as the uh, lime or uh, cultivar salto and also those uh, uh, tolerant to flood for example this is actually a flood tolerant rice variety however in Iri has actually identified the sub one lines and even after 70 days of submergence, there is no significant reduction uh, in the yield. And this is now being piloted in uh, some areas in Asia. Okay. Another technology developed recently and now being tested is the so-called alternate wetting and drying, or AWD. Okay. So you reduce water, you provide water only when it is needed by the crop rather than just having standing water all through a uh, particular period of crop growth. But then you'll see that under this particular uh, there is also a significant reduction on the greenhouse emitted because uh, you know a fertilizer plus water will emit greenhouse gas and therefore one way of uh, reducing emission is actually to reduce water uh, water provided for the irrigated rice production system. So this is one particular technology which is actually bought uh, a climate change adaptation option but also a climate mitigation because you were able to reduce the greenhouse emissions. Now another particular uh, adaptation is actually through the updating of the so-called weather-based dynamic cropping calendar. In other words, you adjust your planting date 
based on your seasonal climate outlook. And for here, for example, uh, this shows the probability of exceeding a particular yield level, for example, two tons per hectare, for different planting days. For example, for week 23, there is about 85% probability of exceeding that particular yield level. And therefore, this suggested that uh, plant, the optimal planting date would be the week of 23, and that would be first week of June. Now, uh, using advances in science and technology, uh, knowledge-based crop forecasting system can now be established, and uh, this makes use of advances in science and technology, particularly the downscaling of uh, seasonal climate outlook at a global level down to a particular region or a particular province, and then making use of satellite imagery to establish the area planted to a particular crop, and then using the crop simulation model to estimate yields so that you can come up with cropping strategies and advisories for the farmers. This is actually now being implemented in a project we call the Sarai, with funding from the USD starting uh, this year up to 2016, making use again of this particular framework. And the idea is that uh, we are tasked to make use of the advances in science and technology, modeling, uh, statistical downscaling, uh, making use of yield probabilities to come up with recommendations and advisories to our farmers, which will be put uh, in our portal, which will be broadcast over the radio, put into bulletins, and also given to our technicians in the field. Then, one particular climate risk management strategy is agri-insurance. So, just like life insurance, we also have agri-insurance. Okay. This is actually a risk sharing and risk transfer mechanism. You are familiar with the Pacquiao management system. Okay? Wherein uh, somebody will, uh, will buy the, the fruit of your particular tree uh, even if it's in the flowering stage. Okay? Like for example, this is applied to lesones, also to mangoes. Okay? This is actually also a risk sharing or risk transfer. You are transferring the risk to the one interested to buy your risk or your, your fruit. Okay? But then after harvest, then you all still get the, the crop or the tree. Now, insurance can be classified as a classical uh, crop insurance. However, the classical crop insurance covers only a portion of the total cost of crop production. Uh, that is the cost of establishment of the crop. That is from uh, the land preparation up to planting and also fertilization. But then, uh, whenever there is natural calamity, this involves crop loss assessment by the assessor. And therefore, there is some hassle uh, as far as negotiating with the assessor on determining what would be the damage particular for your crop. Just like when in your car, when you have an accident, you uh, haggle with your assessor so that uh, uh, you'll be paid for the damage on your car. But then, an alternative one is actually the index-based insurance product, wherein the insurance product is actually based on an agreed index. Okay, an agreed index. And one particular index is based on the measurable weather variables. Okay, an example, the index could be based on the weather data, for example, rainfall data. Okay, or it could be on wind speed, or it could be if you are within the path of a particular typhoon for each stage of crop development. For example, uh, you have uh, variety A, uh, the vegetative stage, the flowering stage, the fueling stage, and perhaps rainfall could be the index. And if the rainfall is below, below this particular reference, then the insurance company pays you. Otherwise, if the rainfall event or the cumulative rainfall is more than this volume, this agreed volume, then you don't get any payout for your particular insurance. Okay. Now, uh, there are also other uh, other indices. For example, if you are within 10 kilometers within the path of the typhoon, then you'll be covered by the insurance. So this kind of arrangement. Okay. But then there are a number of issues and challenges in implementing the so-called weather index-based insurance. Okay. One particular issue is the determination of weather-related index for crop insurance product. Okay. This is still a challenge. So if you are 
uh, looking for a thesis, then this will be a good thesis problem. And for sure, you'll be employed uh, uh, after your graduation. Where the payout for the insurance is actually based on the identified index, such as wind speed, rainfall, type impact, etc. So that means you don't have to haggle with the assessor. Okay? There is this an objective way of you agree on a certain index, and once the index is uh, uh, passed or below, then you make the necessary uh, uh, action. Okay? And this is one particular the rainfall index there, and you're actually agreeing on a reference index. For example, if the agreement here is about 250 millimeters of rainfall, if the rainfall is 249, then, then you are paid by the insurance company. But then, if rainfall is more than 250, for example, then you will get paid uh, for, your, for the damage to your crop. So, uh, the money is actually deposited to your ATM, and you can check that immediately once uh, you are given the advice by the insurance company. Okay. This is an example of what we have done for uh, what we have done for Ilmilo for a particular variety, where you can actually estimate the risk of rainfall deficit for rainfall rice variety, and that's shown in red. Okay, you note here that the risk is actually very low in this uh, wet season period. So this is one you can do this for different crops, and you can actually use this also to determine what will be the best planting date for your particular crop. Now, uh, as I've said, a number of implementation issues uh, occur here, and one particular issue is actually the inadequacy of weather gauging network in the farmlands or crop production areas covered by the weather-based insurance program. Okay? Because the weather-based insurance program covers only crops planted in areas within 20 kilometer radius from the nearest weather gauging stations operated by Palasa. So, no 20 kilometer radius, also the word Palasa. So, only those from Palasa stations. Okay, but then let's look at the location map of gauging stations of Palasa. And what do you notice? They're actually concentrated in either the airports, for example, in Tokigarao, in the coastal areas, okay? But then where our farmlands are not situated, and therefore that becomes a problem. Okay? So we have 7,000 islands, but then we have only less than 100 stations. Okay? So that becomes a problem. But then there are actually existing and planned automatic weather gauging stations in the Philippines, planned by our project, for example, Sarai, the one in red. Okay? There are only about 19 to be, to be set up. Uh, we haven't set it up yet. Also, BSWM, still a plan, but uh, it's actually uh, the purchasing stage. ASTI uh, plans to put up 1,000 AWS all over the country, and of course, uh, another group, Davis. Uh, so, but even then, you see, uh, it looks like uh, the whole Philippines is covered, but then know that the requirement of 20 kilometers is also. Uh, problem there. But then, for that to be to be used, there is a need for accreditation by PAGASA and also the regular calibration for it to be recognized by PAGASA. Unfortunately, PAGASA is still uh, uh, subscribing to its, uh, to its standard that only WMO standard equipment will be used by PAGASA. So, uh, of course, the challenge will be to calibrate. So, if you can calibrate it regularly, there perhaps you can accredit this weather station and therefore you can expand your uh, coverage of the weather insurance based program. Okay. There are a number of issues in establishing adequate network of weather gauging stations. And this includes representativeness of the location of weather stations, considering topography, land use, terrain, elevation, other existence. For example, in Laguna, there is only one weather station, the one in Pili Drive. Oh, actually, there. okay. Only in Pili Drive. The one at Ili, which is a few kilometers, a uh, few meters away, is not recognized by Pagasa, although it's an international organization. So it's only the one at Pili Drive. Okay? 
Another consideration is the cost of facility. There are actually different types. There are so-called standard weather gauging stations. There are also automatic weather stations of different types. I'll show you an example. Reliability of weather data generated. As I've said, we need to calibrate that regularly so that it will be accredited by PACASA. And of course, the other problem is operation and maintenance, including security of facility. The first thing that will be lost is actually the battery okay, in AWS. And therefore, you have to establish certain arrangement with the local stakeholders so that they will, be, they will guard the, the equipment. Okay. This is an example of uh, automatic weather stations, different types actually, uh, and some housing. Okay. So the idea is you put this up, uh, so the price ranges from, uh, from 100,000 to uh, 500,000 or even uh, 1 million, depending on the different types. Okay. But of course there is a trade-off as far as cost and reliability. As I said, if you can only calibrate and so that we can actually accredit that to provide official uh, as accredited data. Okay. Now, another important issue is actually providing products to partners with affordable premium. There is actually no subscription rate of crop insurance products from PCIC. You'll be surprised, less than 15%. 15%. Subscription rate and partners. This is actually related to a number of issues such as very high insurance premium. There are a number of documentary requirements for ANPI insurance and also the operational support and framework and also operations in the field. Okay. So to get insurance, the partner will have to go to, uh, to the city or to the town proper to get the insurance. So we will be suggesting that perhaps. Uh, the crop insurance should go to the field okay? or provide or open up field offices so that the farmers can just trust up from that. The premiums for are actually higher than the regular crop insurance product and there are actually possibilities to lower them. And this includes just like the insurance, life insurance, we also have the so-called group insurance. Group insurance coverage for a group of farmers in adjacent areas. But then, there is a problem here. Assuming that the partners are planting the same crop at the same time, so that they will be referring to the same reference period and also reference rate for data. Partners can also be members of cooperative who can avail of the insurance products at cheaper rate. So, we hope that this can be realized. Uh, now, there is inadequate policy support and regulatory framework for implementation of the so-called WI, WIDI program. And we are hoping that uh, there will be increased number of subscribers, there will be new WBI products to be formulated, and increased crops to be covered. Initially, rice and corn are actually being covered. Okay? And, uh, well, uh, some sugarcane also is being covered and also uh, in some locations coconut but then of course uh, uh, those are uh, areas in areas where uh, studies have been done that uh, uh, the incidence of diseases is not prevalent and we have been suggesting to PCIC, uh, PCIC to put up field offices closer to farmers in the regions, particularly in the marginalized areas uh, in the regions. Okay. We could cite some imperatives for efficient implementation of the weather index based insurance. And this includes providing subsidized insurance program for marginalized farmers and vulnerable crop production areas. And this has been done in some areas in the Philippines. And we hope that this will continue. Reduce taxes and fees imposed on micro insurance providers so that their products will be cheaper or at par with government or PCIC subsidized or even tax free insurance products. Okay. Uh, as you can see, when you, uh, when you have your car insured, there will be a lot of plus plus. Okay. There is a rate. Those with car, check your insurance uh, uh, policy and there will be plus plus there. That's also being applied in this kind of insurance. So uh, the insurance providers like uh, Malaya Insurance have been 
are requesting government to uh, accept themselves from this payment of this insurance uh, taxes. We let LGUs to promote and support this subscription for agri insurance. And hopefully, DA, together with the local government units, will promote climate smart technologies through extension programs such as early warning system advisories, climate resilient and improved technologies that will minimize climate risk. So, we need the cooperation of the, uh, the DA and also the local government units to. Uh, help our marginalized farmers. As an example, this has been piloted in the Philippines. Uh, in particular, in Dabo del Norte, uh, the provincial board subsidized the enrollment and premium, the payment of premium of up to 2,000 hectares. Now, considering about uh, 4 or 5 hectares per farmer, then there's a lot of farmers covered in this particular area. In Agustin del Norte, the PCIC piloted this weather insurance program uh, together with a project funded by the Millennium Development Gold Fund which UPLB and also other UP institutes actually implemented in 2009-2011 and um, in recent years PCIC is piloting this weather interspace insurance for rice and corn in Peña Blanca, Cayar Cabayar uh, that's near to Nicaragua and also in Illumina province for 2013-2015, so one more year. Now, there is a need for continuous capacity building and training of stakeholders, particularly our local government units, our essential workers, and also our planners in uh, the Department of Agriculture, as far as the weather in the space insurance. Now, as far as challenges and imperatives, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is uh, the need for formulation of objective weather index based on reliable weather data in crop areas. This is still uh, an open field. So if you are interested, please contact me and we can discuss how we can work together. We would like to encourage local government units to invest on weather dating stations for agrovent data as well as for every warning system. In other words, the, the AWS can also be used not just for agrovet purposes, but also for every warning system for disaster risk reduction. Accurate seasonal climate outlook and forecast for climate forecasting and farm level decision making, including improving communication strategy for agro technology transfer and dissemination of knowledge based climate risk management measures. In the project that we are implementing, we are translating our results to different dialects in Ibadan, Ilocano, uh, Tagalog, Cebuano, and some other dialects in the Linux. Okay. There is a need to demonstrate systems approaches and cost-effective adaptation strategies, and that's what we are doing in the project Sarai, wherein we make use of systems approaches such as climate smart agriculture science-based climate risk management strategies. And of course, there is a need to, to strengthen existing institutional frameworks and enabling environment for, for climate change adaptation, such as the implementation of the weather-based crop insurance. So, this is actually a new area, a new product being promoted. However, the government still need to uh, provide the enabling environment to reduce the premium, as well as to encourage uh, uh, micro-insurance providers to uh, promote this particular product. And then, communicating advanced climate information to local stakeholders will be an important consideration. Uh, through our extension uh, units, uh, not of the DA, but of course, the extension units of the local government units. And then finally, the mainstreaming of climate smart uh, agriculture through knowledge based crop forecasting system so that uh, this will be a regular activity of the Department of Agriculture through the ADI or the Bureau of Soils and Water Management and the newly established Philippine Statistical Authority and other units. So we hope that this particular weather interspace insurance will be properly addressed by the Department of Agriculture 
as well as our uh, Philippine crop insurance company so that uh, this will indeed be a very useful uh, climate risk management strategy for our small farmers. Concluding remarks, uh, let me mention that climate variability and weather fluctuations are important factors in crop production. And the thematic events have actually brought about significant losses and damages to the agricultural sector, especially for crops and livestock. But then, there are already a number of strategies and measures to respond to or manage climate-related risk, including risk transfer or sharing mechanisms such as agri-insurance. The weather-based, weather index-based insurance coverage provides alternative agri-insurance product with potential benefits. But then, as I indicated, there are a number of issues and challenges still to be addressed for a full and beneficial implementation in the country. But there are also imperatives that need to be established or implemented for the efficient and effective implementation of the weather index-based insurance in our country. So with that, thank you for your attention.
sa mga nangyari na magbabayad ng insurance. Pagkano ang makakamit ng parmer kung sa ilang hektarya? Okay, the cost of the premium is usually, well, an average of about 2,000 per hectare. And the coverage, depending also on the coverage, meaning uh, you can actually insure your crop for a maximum of, uh, I think, 25,000 pesos. But then, corresponding to that, there will be a change in the premium. So in other words, on the average, the premium would be uh, about 2,000 for a coverage of 20,000 per hectare. Yes. Dahil sa akin nyo, ay para sa marginalized partner. Ang nagay ko, the marginalized partner will not uh, spare 2,000 pesos per hectare. That's kahit, right. Kahit nga yung pag-aaralo niya ng umutang pa siya rin eh. That's true. That's true. And that's the reason why uh, only those who can actually afford the insurance premium will get the insurance, of course. But then, uh, for the marginalized, the proposal was for the LGU the local government unit to cover uh, the premium or reduce the premium by reducing the taxes. Okay, so you provide uh, incentives to the insurance providers. The local provider is actually Malaya Insurance or Micro Insure. There are a number of micro insurance providers uh, in the field, but they've been clamoring for exemption for payment of issue, uh, this, this plus plus uh, taxes. From government. So they are actually treated as a useful life insurance company. Not uh, to help the farmers, but of course uh, to be a source of income for government. Okay. Yes, hello. Uh, last lang. Yes, hello. Last lang. 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 Last you have to make your ATM and the money is transferred automatically to your DM. So don't know. After you have agreed, then uh, just wait for the money. If, uh, if the agreement is 250 millimeters of rainfall, if rainfall received during the period is 249, then the company will automatically deposit the amount to your account. But then if the amount of rainfall declared by Pagasa is official announcement, is 251 or about, you don't get the payout. Okay? So no more haggling, no more hassle of negotiating with your insurance assessor. Just like when you have a car, okay? You haggle with your assessor uh, to, to cover the damage in your car. That's the arrangement as far as this uh, weather space is right? your yeah. uh, I think uh, you probability that I'm right? okay. Uh, we used to work with Erie, you know. Pag misan mo ka dito sa kolehiyo, doon sa Erie hindi mo ulan. Kaya there will be a difference in the precipitation. So how will that uh, answer some of the inequalities in the uh, validity of the rainfall uh, that is reported in okay. the station? Yeah, the, the implementation that is actually related to the number of or the adequacy or representativeness of the weather station. Okay, as much as possible, we would like uh, more weather stations to cover more areas rather than, you know, 20 kilometer radius. Uh, so it should have been, uh, you know, even lesser than that, maybe less than uh, one kilometer away, uh, that would be very useful. Okay. But, uh, well, the, uh, at the moment, the PCIC coverage uh, prescribed only those within the 20 kilometer radius will be covered by the insurance. And, the station should be accredited by PAKASA, meaning only PAKASA stations, because you know, so far they have not accredited any AWS, even by BSWM or other uh, uh, other uh, groups. Okay. Yes, ma'am. On the status, uh, on the status of the current indices being used, because you were mentioning only about rainfall efficiency. So how about the indices for flooding, for floods, and uh, the weeks in that you were mentioning earlier? So are there already WIDI programs? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are already a big pilot, okay, and also including the Typhoon Pad. If you are within a certain uh, kilometer away from the center of the Typhoon Pad, published by Bagasa, Again, published by Pakasa, then you are covered by the insurance. 
So, uh, but this telephone insurance has not been very successful yet because, uh, you know, uh, studies still have to be done to actually establish that particular or formulate that particular index. But uh, the simplest is actually the weather index based on rainfall volume because you can associate that with, uh, uh, with crop growth and development. The other one is on uh, the flooding. So the number of days that have been piloted, but the most popular one is this rainforest based insurance product. Sir, about the premium and benefit that you mentioned earlier. Yes. So is this constant whether you are in the flowering stage or in the vintage stage? It is not constant. Uh, so you, you are actually given a choice uh, on the volume and also on the premium, uh, but basically that's being adjusted. So you upgrade beforehand what would be the level that you're going to watch for. Because the reason probably why premiums are higher or why buy instead of the classical insurance products is because the benefit is higher than for the classical insurance, which is simply partial uh, production cost. That's right. Well, at the moment, our crop insurance system covers only the cost of establishing the crop. For example, up to land preparation, up to planting. Even if it's about to be harvested next week, uh, they will pay you only the amount that you spend to establish the crop, not your expected yield. Unlike in the US, you can actually ensure your future harvest. In the Philippines, we don't have that yet. Okay? That's, the idea. That's the idea. You can you can actually ensure your future harvest. So that even if uh, the typhoon uh, damages your crop, on the day of your harvest, then you can still get the benefit of the payout. Yes. Sir, uh, thank you. I'm interested in your uh, uh, <coughs> research. I'm a forester, so uh, well, in forestry, we know that uh, the mountains, if uh, fully uh, vegetated or planted with trees, uh, natural forest, and they have uh, uh, several or four uh, levels of carbis, and they are more efficient in uh, preventing uh, full, full uh, falling of uh, the water in, uh, in the land. And for this, because of this, there is less flood uh, going to the lowlands uh -huh. and also the distance of these uh, areas, production areas from the mountains uh, should be also considered. And then, uh, regarding the wind and the effect of the sea, we have the mangroves, mangrove forests, uh -huh. and we, 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 have, we know that there are several species of mangroves uh, depending on the salinity of the water and the depth of the water the sea. So, uh, well, we know that these mangroves uh, diminish or decrease the effect of wind and, uh, shall we say, seawater damage to uh, uh, crop production areas near the sea. So, I suggest this is a suggestion, it, uh, it will be all right with you. Uh -huh. But there should also be a forestry uh, uh, consideration, research to be considered so that it could be a part of the uh, system of ensuring because if the flooding is uh, decreased and the effect of wind and sea water and salinity is decreased, probably the insurance will be lessened and the premium by the farmers will be less. And there will be more farmers or areas that could be insured. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, actually, as I mentioned to you, uh, one of the basic problems is actually the formulation of the index. And the other problem is related to that, the availability of reliable weather data. As you know, uh, we, have, we have very limited weather data, uh, weather stations, and in fact, uh, well, uh, there have been uh, clamor for access to 
uh, this data so that that could be used for uh, research and development. You're right, sir. Um, uh, that's still a problem. Uh, even a uh, way of uh, reducing the high premium would be to lessen the taxes. Because particularly for, uh, for the marginalized uh, small holders. Any other question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. May Mercado, you failed the graduate school. Uh, sorry, I'm going to ask you, halimbawa, um, for a 5-hectare land, yung po ba basis ng pagpili ng farmer ng parang parameter kung saan siya, example dun sa rainfall na pili yes. yung po, example ba yun, will that be dependent on the crop or based lang dun sa decision ng farmer? Kasi for example, some farmers plant multiple crops on about 5 hectare. Five hectare land, Well, uh, it's uh, crop based, so it has to be the the risk uh, assessment is actually based on a particular crop. So at the moment, it's focused on rice, corn, sugarcane. Okay. Sure. For um, example, um, for the five hectare land, he plants um, example rice and then corn. Will that have different? Um, Will that have different um, rainfall na, rainfall something na i-consider? Okay, if you plant for example on January 1, for example, there is already estimate uh, up to a certain period of harvest, then you can actually compute the risk involved and the insurance company will already provide you a list of uh, the insurance, uh, the index. Okay, for this index then uh, this corresponding uh, <coughs> Uh, corresponding premium that you have to pay. But of course, before you were able to come up with that uh, table, a lot of studies have been done analyzing the uh, the chances of getting so much rainfall during that particular period. Of course, there. But then, as I mentioned earlier, we still lack adequate, reliable data from which to estimate the risk. But, but the methodology is there, so uh, that's why we are covering that other weather stations be recognized for this particular presentation. So, accreditation. Uh, even if you are using a very small weather station, or uh, uh, automatic weather station, uh, not like the standard of ASA, then as long as you are calibrating it, then that will still be useful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Sarah, for your nice presentation. I am Mitra from Kemuri, and uh, now I'm studying in SIPA. Um, if I am the one who comes from insurance companies, I tend to use the data wisely, and I will set up the index. Maybe I expect the benefit, so the, the average of index perhaps is higher than the average of the rainfall. And then, from the farmer side, they don't know, probably, they don't know the average of the rainfall every year. So, how can you suggest them to decide to buy the, the insurance without any knowledge of the, of the, 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 the index? Thank you. Okay, very good question. Okay, uh, the, the role of the extension agent would be very critical here because they need, as I mentioned earlier, there is a need to, to build the capacity and also to communicate this particular product. So that can be done by our uh, extension agents from the local government units, our technicians, our municipal agriculturists. So that can easily be done. And of course, uh, that can be broadcasted also over radio and also maybe through comics or maybe through other informal means. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Claire, an MS Agrometeorology student. Um, you have said that limited to reliable weather data for yes. I'm working on some data. Pag-asa din, and I agree. 
but um, you are presenting an insurance that is weather-based. So, paano yung sir, what are the strategies that you're doing to compensate that limitation? Kasi, um, first and foremost, napaka-variable na, eh, sabi nyo nga po, erratic yung rainfall. Location pa lang ng Pilipinas, we are very vulnerable to to um, yung mga maliban sa mga bagyo, we still have habagat and other things. So, kung weather-based insurance siya, and we have limited reliable weather data, paano nyo po na compensate yung limitation? Okay. The first recommendation is to increase the number of weather stations. The second is to let us uh, recognize or accredit those weather stations whose data have been calibrated with the standard WMO PAC-ASA uh, equipment. So that's the first thing. And then the rest will follow formulating uh, indices based on that weather data. Okay, so the idea is make more, uh, put up more uh, weather stations. So in that case, sir, nasa na tayo sa weather insurance base. Kasi ang, parang expanding the weather station is such, hindi siya short term. That's but right. With the situation that the Philippines is experiencing right now, this weather insurance base um, is very beneficial for the farmers. So, uh, at this point of time, nasa na po yung yan at the same time, Let's say five years, what is the expectation to move on? Okay, good question. Okay, we are still in the piloting stage as far as uh, Huawei. Okay, uh, the PCIC is still in the pilot stage, I mentioned to you about. Currently, they are implementing it in Cagayan and also in Iloilo. Now, uh, I showed also uh, the, figure, the, the map of, location map of several stations being planned. Okay. ASD or BOSD is running 1,000 AWS. The main concern is more on disaster risk reduction, more of the Project NOAA type of activities. Okay? But then we are adding 19, only 19, uh, crop forecasting purposes for selected sites. Okay? And of course, you see other. So I think what can be done is to prioritize locations in the most uh, vulnerable areas and explore also uh, efficient indices that can be used given this data. Now, of course, the challenge is how do you assess reliability of the weather data when, well, there are procedures, by the way. There are statistical procedures, and you're probably familiar with procedures checking uh, being used also by WMO before they release their uh, weather data. Okay, so that can be done, and we are still in the Initial stage. Now, the question is, where will, where are going to be in five years' time? It's still a pilot thing, I suppose. So <laughs> we are awaiting students to help, you know, formulate indices. So that could be a good thesis problem. You can experiment on UPLP data. We can uh, plant here at uh, the central experimental station. The weather station is very close. Right? So you can easily do that. So. That's the reason why I propose this, uh, that uh, students may be interested. If you are interested, we can fund you through our project. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Anna Vivante, a graduate student from M5 side. Sir, I'm just curious of um, what is the, what are the pop, uh, composition of the farmers in your pilot areas? Because uh, in terms of coping mechanisms and risk, uh, the socioeconomic uh, status, or like uh, security of tenure and uh, capital for production is very influential. Uh, ano po ba yung ano, uh, mga landed farmers po ba sa pilot areas nyo or tenants or small holders? And yeah. what were the differences among the farmers with different uh, socioeconomic backgrounds? I'm not the one piloting the project. Uh, I uh, the PCIC, in collaboration with DA and also with, uh, with the World Bank, is actually piloting the project. Uh, 
in Peña, in Peña Blanca, in, that's uh, close to Tomicarao, and also in uh, Iloilo, Iloilo province. And you have all kinds of, you know, it should be rented rice farms. Rented rice farms. Okay. In uh, Peña Blanca, is uh, rice and corn based farmers of different sizes. And uh, you have marginal, uh, uh, marginalized farmers also. You also have uh, uh, farmers with an average of about six hectares per farmer. So the tenure status was considered in the case? Yes, yes. Um. Other questions? Yes, sir. Well, I have a student Uh, the challenge is actually how to quantify climate risk. I'll give you an example. Uh, 
Okay, if you get the data of UPLP, huh? very reliable data, I suppose, right? Uh, 1959 to 78, you get all the maximum values. 1979 to 2006, I've done it actually, I published it already. Uh, you compare the distribution. You simply just draw the histogram. You see, in the 1959-78 data, it's almost uniformly distributed. Okay? But then, in 1979 to 2006, it's unimodal, and then there is an extreme, the one that plotted UPLB. Okay? So it's no longer the same uh, distribution. So if you look at it, and therefore, uh, if you associate that with frequency of occurrence, okay? Now, for example, for converse, roads. Roads are actually built to withstand a 20-year flood, meaning the probability of accidents is 5%. So it's some statistics, right? But then that 5% before, that magnitude is no longer the 5% after climate change. Oh, okay? That's why you are now experiencing the same magnitude more frequently. So therefore, you have to change your design of the road. You have to put, just like what happened in SLX, they have to uh, put uh, overlay so that it will be higher again. Okay. The converts. Before, you can do with a 50 centimeter convert. But now, because of too much water, you have to come up with a 1 meter diameter convert. Okay? So, that's just a simple explanation. So, we have evidences to show that indeed the distribution has changed. Not because of the instrumentation, because that has been corrected for change in instrumentation. So, uh, uh, it has been published. If you are interested, I can send you a copy. And there is a coming book uh, within the year, uh, written by Ipri and also Neda on, on that particular aspect, relating it to the future of agriculture under a changing climate. So that's, that will be available. If you are interested, let me know. Well, 
there are actually uh, enterprise procedures available uh, in the literature. So, well, agrometeorologists, statisticians will be employed, right? Uh, so, those are known procedures for uh, estimation and also downscaling for specific locations. So, there are procedures. That's the standard procedure. Yes, ma'am. Sir, I would like to think that uh, weather is location based. Yes, of it's course. It's not crop based. So, once you have uh, data on weather for a particular location, it's just that currently the available insurance is on rice and corn. But you can always uh, implement an insurance for another crop. But of course, you will have to do a different costing because this time the, the effect of weather on the different crops vary. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Kaya, kaya ko lang po bring up your question ayun, kasi we attended, sir, yung last times of traders that um, ang speaker natin, yung taga Mike, I'm sure. And It's sabi, a good friend of mine. Yun nga, sir. Yeah. Eh, sabi po doon, kaya hindi <clears throat> daw pwede, kaya wala pa daw yung ibang crops kasi walang enough data for crops na kung paan siya naapektuhan ng changing weather. So, kung hinihintay pa natin yung 30 years weather data at saka kukunin pa natin yung effect plus <laughs> crop mismo, uh, okay. ma ano ko lang po, gaano katagal yeah. natin? Yung yung tanong po, gaano kaya natin okay. katagal kung kayo That's right. na nagmamadali? Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, two problems. The formulation of the index. The other one, reliable weather data. But then, there are now crop models, crop simulation models. Okay? But then it requires genetical, genetic coefficients. Now, if you have genetic coefficients for all the crops, you can actually model that and you don't need the experiments anymore. You can just experiment on the crop on the computer. But then, what, is, what we have so far right now are crop data based on physiological studies, and you know that, only for rice and corn and some vegetables. Okay? We don't have for coconut yet. They're just starting. For example, those of you who are interested, as so of two weeks ago, there will not be a design for coconut, a design model for coconut. So uh, after so many years, finally a crop model for coconut will be coming out. So you can play around with those numbers uh, on the computer, and then also the estimated weather data from uh, several locations for your particular locations. So the idea is that for a particular coordinate, you can estimate the risk involved. And you can provide the farmer, farmer A, uh, this is the risk associated with planting at these different time periods. When are you planting? When you plant, June 1. That's my birthday, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is the associated risk. Okay, and you agree. So give me your ATM, you sign, you pay, and so on. So that's uh, as easy as that. Provided that you have a great threshold level. That's the critical one, the index. And that's awaiting research by our, so maybe the aftermath, and you work with me. Okay?